All right, ready for a deep dive? Today, we're heading straight into the operating room. Oh, sounds a bit intense. Well, it is, in a way. But don't worry, no scalpels here. We're tackling general anesthesia. Ah, the mystery of going under. Exactly. Whether you've got surgery coming up, you're just curious, or you're like me and love knowing how things work. We're breaking it down. We are. Using the Mayo Clinic and HealthWise Knowledge Base as our guides. Excellent sources. So first things first, what exactly IS general anesthesia? Is it just like falling asleep? Well, it does create that sleep-like state, you know, unconscious, no pain. Right. But it's way more complex than just dozing off. It actually affects your breathing, your vital functions. Oh, wow. That's why it needs a whole specialized team to manage it carefully. So it's not something they'd use for just any procedure, right? Definitely not. It's reserved for specific situations. Think long procedures, complex surgeries. Okay, so open heart surgery, things like that. Exactly. Anything requiring complete muscle relaxation or where there might be significant bleeding. Makes sense. When staying still and pain-free is absolutely crucial. You got it. Sometimes even simpler procedures, like setting a bone, might need it if movement would mess with healing. Gotcha. Now, I'm curious about this team. Mm -hmm. Who all is involved in this whole controlled unconsciousness thing? The anesthesiologist, that's the physician specializing in anesthesia. They're the key player. Of course. They often work with a certified registered nurse anesthetist, a CRNA. Together, they monitor your vital signs throughout the entire procedure. Like breathing, heart rate, all that. Yep. Blood pressure, oxygen levels. They're keeping you safe while you're out. Reassuring to know. Yeah. But how do they actually administer the anesthesia? Couple of ways. They can inject it directly into your vein, IV route. Okay. Or you can breathe in a special gas through a mask, sometimes a combo of both. So for kids, maybe the mask is a bit easier, less scary. Could be. Makes it feel like drifting off to sleep. Right. And what about the breathing tube? Is that always necessary? Yeah, usually. Make sure you're getting enough oxygen, protects your lungs. They put it in after unconscious, take it out before you wake up. Won't even remember it. Now, on to the part I think some people dread risks and side effects. Right. I know anesthesia is generally safe these days, mm -hmm. but there's got to be some things to be aware of. You're right. There are risks, just like with any medical procedure, however small. Sure. But the good news is anesthesia teams are expertly trained to manage those risks. They keep you as safe as possible. So are there certain people who might be at higher risk than others? Yes. Some conditions can increase the risk slightly. Smoking, sleep apnea, obesity, heart conditions. Makes sense. That's why being completely open with your doctor about your medical history is so important. The more they know. The better they can tailor the anesthesia plan. Exactly. To minimize any potential problems. Now, you mentioned anesthesia awareness. That's incredibly rare, thankfully. I've heard about that. It sounds terrifying. It is, but it's like one or two cases out of every thousand. Wow, it's good to know. And even then, experiencing pain during those instances is even rarer. Modern technology and techniques have made it really uncommon. Huge relief. What about less dramatic side effects, like feeling sick or groggy afterwards? <sighs> the classic post-anesthesia stories. Those are more common, but usually temporary. Right, nausea, sore throat. Yeah, feeling groggy, that's typical as your body processes the medications, but it usually fades pretty quickly. Okay, that makes sense. So let's say I've got a procedure coming up that needs general anesthesia. What can I do to prepare anything to make the whole thing smoother? Talk to your doctor. Be completely open past surgeries, allergies, medications you take regularly, any previous experiences with anesthesia. Good or bad. So full transparency. Exactly. Helps them create the safest, most comfortable anesthesia plan just for you. And I imagine following the pre-surgery instructions is key, especially the fasting part. Absolutely. Those guidelines are there for a reason. Empty stomach means less risk of complications. Makes sense. Also, if you use a CPAP machine for sleep apnea, bring it with you to the hospital. Right. Good reminder. Okay. So we've gone under the procedures done. Mm -hmm. What happens when you wake up? Usually pretty gradual, you'll regain consciousness either right in the operating room or in the recovery room. Okay. It's normal to feel a bit groggy, disoriented at first. That passes quickly, though. And the team's monitoring you the whole time. And what about pain management afterward? I imagine that's a big concern for most people. Absolutely. And it's a top priority. You'll get medications to minimize any discomfort. Ah. Don't be shy about telling the staff how you're feeling so they can adjust things as needed. That's good advice. So to sum it up, General anesthesia, while still a bit mysterious to many, 
is actually a very controlled process. Precisely. It's all about you, your surgical team, and your anesthesia team working together for your safety and comfort. So that anesthesia team, they're really the ones holding your hand, metaphorically, the whole time. You could say that. They're mm -hmm. constantly monitoring, adjusting, responding to your body's needs while you're under. Unsung heroes of the operating room, for sure. It's incredible when you think about it. You know, we can switch off consciousness and pain, do complex procedures, and bring someone back safely. Mind-boggling. Truly is a testament to human ingenuity and dedication in the medical field. And it's constantly evolving. New techniques, medications, always improving. Which makes me wonder, what exciting advancements in anesthesia can we expect down the road? What's on the horizon? Great question. One really exciting area is personalized medicine. Imagine tailoring anesthesia to your unique genetic makeup and health profile. Personalized anesthesia, that's fascinating. Like, custom made. Exactly. Fewer side effects, faster recovery times, all because the anesthesia is specifically designed for you. Wow. Well, on that note of excitement, we've come to the end of our deep dive into general anesthesia today. We've learned what it is, why it's used, the crucial roles of the anesthesia team, how it's administered, the potential risks and benefits, and even peeked into the future. We covered a lot. But remember, this is just the start of your exploration. There's so much information out there, and I encourage you to keep learning and asking questions. Exactly. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your own health. So as you go about your day, maybe a little less mystified by going under, take a moment to think. What advancements in anesthesia would you like to see in the future? What could make surgery even safer and more comfortable for everyone? It's something worth considering. Absolutely. And hey, yeah. remember, this was just a glimpse into the world of general anesthesia. There's a whole lot more out there to explore. Oh, definitely. That's the best part about learning. There's always more to discover. So to our listeners, if you're feeling even a little less worried about going under after today's deep dive, then we've done our job. Keep those questions coming. Stay curious and never stop exploring the world around you. Until next time, happy diving. And that's a wrap for today. See you on our next deep dive.